Hi everyone, it's Rendon with TJ Free. Today we're going to be working with film and using free and open source software to enhance and improve the film, including artificial intelligence and machine learning software. So if you want to follow along, you can download this original source file. I'll include the, li the link in the description of the video. This is film shot by Louis Le Prince in 1888. It's the oldest known surviving uh, film that we have. It's only 20 frames long. Uh, and it shot at about 12 frames per second. And so the first thing I needed to do was bring this into GIMP. That's the first program I'm working with. Here you can see that this is the negative version. So we need to invert this. This is like a negative the way it was shot originally. This is what it would look like if you were to look at the film today. So we can do this in, uh, in GIMP. If you're not familiar with GIMP, it's free and open source software similar to Adobe, uh, Adobe Photoshop. And, uh, but it's community developed, 100% free. It's not a trial version, great software. The next thing I did was cropped out each individual image. Since it was one large image that I downloaded, I wanted to crop out and have individual images. So I have 20 images or frames, and I can just play through really quick just in the image viewer, pressing the arrow key to see roughly what this looks like without being adjusted or rotated or aligned at all. Then I brought them all in as individual layers in GIMP. So I could turn on and off those layers and just see what they look like. And what I wanted to do was line them up so they were roughly aligned with each other sort of a it's kind of like image stabilization or video stabilization but doing it manually so i turned on this i set the mode to overlay and then i would just try to line them up and when they got really blurry i knew they were out of line and when they came in focus they were in line i was being careful not to rotate i'm only lining them up because when i rotate the images at this size it creates this cutting effect with the pixel there's only so few pixels so i didn't want to rotate yet i'm going to be upscaling these these images later so I didn't do uh, any rotation at this point. But I did do, uh, on certain frames, they were lined up enough, I could clone from one frame to another to replace parts of the image like I'm doing here. So this isn't the clone, this is the clone tool, but it's not cloning from the same frame. Same with this, I'm cloning from frame two onto frame four uh, because it had bit more information about that part of the film. So a really cool thing that you can do, you can't always do this with pictures, but when you have moving pictures like this, uh, this film, you can, I was able to complete a pretty good scene. So the frames looked like this when I cropped them. Then after my manual stabilization and sort of some of the frame cleanup, it looks like this. It's still low resolution. So the next step is to upscale the images using this Wi-Fi 2X. This is also free and open source software, very common with anime. So you'll upscale to get rid of artifacting from JPEGs and maybe lower resolution images. It's not vector art, it's, it's just upscaling, and you can do it with uh, illustrations and with photos. So I set it up to do it with photos, and I did a, a test, and then we can see here when I upscaled it, the original photo was about 1,000 uh, pixels square, and this is more like 8,000. So I upscaled this kind of to 8K, I guess you could say. You can't tell a lot just by looking at it, but there is a lot more pixel data here. If we zoom in very closely, we can see this is the upscaled version, and there's a nice gradient of pixels to work with, you know, basically eight times more pixels, or what is that, no, 10 times? Eight times, eight times more pixels. Um, there, here's an example of kind of overdoing it. You can lose some data, so you wanna be careful. But I found a, a good method that I liked. I did uh, level one, I did denoise and magnification, and I just did the 5X rate because I wanted to do 4K instead of 8K. Uh, and this is what it looks like after upscaling. So again, you can't really tell a difference here, but it is going to make a difference when we start the interpolation, which is adding more frames. Um, but at this point, I was ready to bring it back into GIMP and rotate. So now I can rotate all of these and align them perfectly. I also took the opportunity to create a background without any of the characters. So it's just a static background uh, because I would use this, well, we'll see later on. I use this to kind of stabilize and create uh, a more constant background. The next program I come into is Darktable, also free and open source. It's like it's kind of like Lightroom. I adjusted some of the levels and the just the black and white balance and added some contrast, and I just got this image ready to be colored. And I used this Deoldify, also, of course, free and open source software. And this also uses um, machine learning to color the image. So you upload a black and white image, and it gives you a colored image. Pretty cool stuff. 
Um, so this is what it looks like colored, but it's still very pale. So I brought it back into Darktable and I added some more saturation and then I gave it some more focus on certain areas. If you're not familiar with Darktable, you should really be using it. It's such a powerful program and you can do so, so much with it. But this is just a couple of things doing some different masks. It's also all non-destructive editing so you can go back and change things without affecting your original image. Um, really, really cool stuff. So I enhanced the colors uh, as best I could, and I'm still not a master at dark table, so I'm sure some of you could do better at this. Hopefully this video kind of inspires you to maybe uh, do some more of that. So after playing around in dark table for a little while, I got the colors where I felt like I wanted them. I came back over to the frames. Now remember, these are the upscaled frames, but they have a lot of gaps in between, so there's still only 20 frames. So it's still very choppy. So you can see as the as the characters move, there's some gaps in between. Uh, it's just older because it's only 12 frames every second. So we can use this Dane app. Um, this is really cool. So Dane is also open source software, also utilizes AI and machine learning. You just need to input your video or your image sequence in this case. And then also you need to know your original frames per second FPS. In this case, it's 12. And so this will interpolate. I did 2x interpolation. So there's 20 frames, so it gives us 39 total because there's a, the, it can't interpolate past the end frame. And so it creates a new folder for us, and it has these interpolated frames. And so there's twice as many when we do the 2x interpolation. So we have 39 frames total. And we can click on these and look and see, and we can just advance forward with the keyboard and see that there's very fine, there's a lot more movement in between each of these. We can see more details, and it sort of figures out the momentum of, of where they're walking, and it's, it knows what parts to move and what parts to change. I went into GIMP, and I brought these 39 frames in, and I touched them up a little bit, because some of them, it didn't do a perfect job of guessing where the, like the leg would be, for example. So I redrew parts of those 39 frames, then I brought them back into Dane app to interpolate again. So this time I re-put in all 39, and I did the 8x interpolation. So that means it'll be eight times. And so out of these 39, uh, we got just over 300. And now my new frames per second FPS is 24. This process took about an hour and a half. I have a 1080 Ti graphics card. You have to have a card that supports CUDA. You have to have like an NVIDIA graphics card. And um, yeah, it's it's pretty intensive on your, on your GPU. And it, it can be time consuming, especially depending on your resolution, the image resolution. But in this case, we got th over th 300 frames. And let's look how much fine detail we have in these images. It's really cool. This is just um, fast forwarding, advancing through, just watching them in the uh, photo viewer. Um, here's an example bringing it into Shotcut. I also just use FFmpeg um, to combine these into a video. But once they're combined into a video, we can upload it again to deoldify. So instead of just the picture, we're uploading the entire video this time to add color to the video. This process takes a little while too, but it's using Google servers. So you don't need to have um, a good graphics card for this because Google is letting you use theirs. So this colors uh, every frame uh, of this video. And then to put it on that colorful background um, that we were working with in Darktable, I cropped just the part of that colored video and bring it in. That's so that we don't have all this sort of warping around of the entire image. It just stabilizes it. And so it creates sort of this look. And I even cleaned this up further so you can't quite see that box as much. So I kind of am um, just using masking and all open source software. I did this in uh, Shotcut, in Caden Live, in Olive, and had good results with all of them. So you can just do this in any video editor. But this is what the final result looks like. I flipped it because this is the way it was really in real life uh, was captured in. So hopefully you found this video informative, guys. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below. I'll include links in this uh, video description of all the software uh, that's covered in this video. But really, really fun project and a great study if you're curious and you want to really dive in and learn um, about uh, video and uh, frames and movies and picture and all that stuff. Just a really, really good project uh, to, uh, to do if, you wanna, if you're bored and want to do something fun. As always, thanks so much for watching. Leave your questions and comments below if you have any, and I look forward to catching you in the next video.